So the next advanced technique that I want to talk about is using a graduated neutral density masking filter. This is exactly what you'd do if you're going to use a graduated neutral density filter out in the field, put it on your lens. I find it's a much better way to do it than doing in Photoshop. Sometimes you don't have them along, sometimes it just doesn't do the job. Nine times out of ten, it's because you forgot them, you should have brought them along. But that graduated neutral density filter, worth its weight in gold. You can still save some of these pictures, however, in Photoshop. So the way we're going to do that is a neutral density filter, a graduated neutral density filter, I should say, gradually gets darker from one side to the next. So we're going to make it slowly get darker up this way. The sky is too bright for the exposure. The dynamic range of this picture, you can see we got a lot of blacks that are clipped off. We got some whites that are clipped off. And with a, a graduated neutral density filter, that would have brought that dynamic range in, would have shrunk our histogram in, and would have been much more controllable. So we can do some things. and We could go in and we could do a shadow and highlights adjustment. And we can bring out, you know, we can try to bring down those highlights. But we've got some highlights that are so bad, so burnt out, that they just start to get pure white. So if we do too much, then they really stick out. That's pretty bad. Now the shadows, maybe we can do a little bit of work in them, make it look more natural, like it's a sunny day. That doesn't look too bad. It's starting to look a little tinny in there, though. So bring that down. You know, make it look real, not some artificial place. Sometimes some pictures you can't save. But what we're going to do next is we're going to make a gradient. So down here is this black and white, and this might go off the screen a little bit. We're going to click this button to create a new fill and adjustment layer. And the next one down from solid color is gradient. So we're going to click that. Looks like the last thing I was doing was using a gray gradient. So first thing we want to do is we want our gradient to be on top of the picture. So we hit reverse. There we go. It gets on top. Now if we double click inside this gradient, we can see this bottom line is the color, and this is where it goes. This black and white is where this gradient will start. So if we drag it over here, you can see it gradients most of the picture, then it starts to get clear over here. Uh, what we're going to do, however, is we want to take just the upper portion from that mountain up to the sky, and that's the part that we want to darken up. So the next thing we want to do is we obviously don't want to use tan. We actually want to use gray. This is a neutral density filter, and what we're going to do, we're going to change the layer option over here. And we're going to change it so by using a gray color, it's going to make it go right through, and the colors are going to be neutral. So that dark color, we want to have a medium dark gray, and then click OK. For this right color, we want to have a lighter gray, because we want it to transition slowly across that spectrum. And you look up here, is that too dark? Maybe it is. Maybe we'll make this a little bit lighter. So we want to just darken up that sky a little bit so that dynamic range comes back in. You see we handled the, sh we handled the, sh the shadows over here, and we want to handle the highlights. So the next step, once we've got our gray, we've got it our adjustment, so we, want it, we don't want it all the way down to the edge. We want it just on the mountain. So we're going to come up here, maybe bring it in a little bit more, maybe stretch it out. You know, We want to cover that mountaintop. Once you have a good, hit OK. Now we're also going to hit OK right over here. Now here's where the magic starts. You've got to adjust your layer. And you've got to bring this down from normal. You've got to bring it to overlay. Once you click overlay, it's not going to be gray anymore. That blue sky is going to pop out. Those wide white clouds are going to get a little bit darker. And watch this. We hit overlay. And now we've got a blue sky. We can do before and after. It darkens up that sky, makes it look normal, and also watch over here. See, we've got our histogram, and it's moving slightly inside, bringing our dynamic range more into what our camera could see and what looks more uh, natural to the eye. So now, now that we've adjusted, we can go back and maybe do another shadow adjustment. Bring that over here because it's going to darken up that filters on top of this so it doesn't make it look so tinny so artificial and we can work on that and we can decide okay do I like that do I not like that you know maybe you do all this work and you decide you know what maybe this should just be a black and white control you but you still made that sky dark and that's what's awesome we could go back here and we're going to just keep that color it's a neater color with those greens 
but that is a graduated neutral density filter right in Photoshop. In other programs, especially Lightroom 2, these filters are actually becoming just a standard element that you can one-click add. Really cool, so we might talk about that in a later video. But this is a really handy tool. But my advice, don't do it in Photoshop if you can do it in, in the real world. So get yourself a graduated neutral density filter. Get yourself a good one, like a Lee or a Singray filter. Throw it on the camera and take pictures that way. But if you have to, you can come back into Photoshop and edit them. Get out the results that you really want. But again, it's all about editing your histogram. Get your dynamic range and get those pictures.